Hello everyone, this is Carlos, the marketing lead with Jacob, the IT lead. Hey. As promised, we are here to show you the proof of concept slash demo that we used at the Web Summit and at the Malta Blockchain Summit during our talks with potential partners. As was already mentioned in the latest tech updates, the purpose of the proof of concept is one, to demonstrate the basic data flow in the ecosystem, aka close the circle. Two, to have a prototype of the most crucial components in the ecosystem. And three, to be able to show a glimpse of the concept of Vetri, but without showing all of the currently developed or designed features from the MVP product specifications. I'd also like to mention that no other functionality in the app is currently mocked. It parses and works with real data, and smart contracts get really signed on our private chain. Here is a setup. We will be streaming the screens from three individuals. There are two data owners, one who's waiting to receive VLD tokens in exchange for a service or good via a simple token transfer, uh, let's call him Danny, and another who sells access to their data for VLD tokens, that's Jakub. Uh, the third actor in the day is a data consumer who is creating a data request and in turn receiving data for valid tokens. This is Danny's screen. He's currently in the token wallet. Here you can see his address, his QR code, and the current total balance of his wallet. And this is Jakub viewing his identity information. As you can see, it has not yet been fully verified. Now let's move off app and into the data consumer interface. Here is where companies such as market research firms can create data requests. For our demo's purpose, let's say that the data consumer performing the data request is Prosivis and will be creating a new data offer. Also, to highlight, the data consumer has his own endpoint or server for accessing data he purchased. This will be available for all data consumers. So coming back to the data request interface, we will show you how a data request is created. We will start with creating the general specifications. Here a data consumer can add the description of the data request, which a data owner will see prior to agreeing to transferring data. So let's give the request a title. In this case, we would want to request Facebook data from the user, for example, likes. So we will put it in the title so it specifically mentions this. Uh, in the future, if a data consumer wants to request more information, it'll be much more difficult, so it would summarize it. Uh, concerning the body, we have already pre-populated the body with descriptions of this request. Uh, here we're gonna show you some more uh, how it's done. It's just an easy text box. You just put in uh, information there, and this is the information that the data owner will see. On top of this, uh, we will also add an image to the request. This is done via the URL uh, input field below this. Uh, this is where you know you can put the logo of the party making the request or an image representing the type of data that's being requested. Next, we're going to indicate the data we want to pay for. And in this exercise, we will be requesting Facebook likes from data owners. Uh, in doing so, we will be searching for facebook.api.me.likes. In the future, this will be better, uh, better worded or better categorized uh, for the data consumers uh, to you know, make it a better user experience. Uh, note that the price estimation currently doesn't reflect reality, so in the mobile app, you'll see a reward of 100 VLD tokens for each data exchange, since this is currently set as a default for, our te uh, for testing purposes. Here, you will actually be able to set up the duration of the request. So you can actually put the date here and then the request will disappear after a specified date. And this is where we would put the total requests we want. So for example, we want 100 individuals to answer the request for us. And note that the valuation is of course going to be different because for testing we have 100 VLD tokens per request. And finally, here we can review the request. We'll see all the information that we populated, uh, the title, the description, the image URL, and of course the offer duration and the number of data owners we want to get information from. So that's, we're good to go. So Jakub is gonna take over from here. Cool. So what actually happened once Carlos confirmed the data exchange request is that the offer from Prosivis landed on the marketplace. And there's a smart contract waiting to be signed by data owners who fit the targeting criteria. 
Also note that Carlos hasn't set any targeting in the previous step, so everyone is good to go. And here we are back in the wallet, actually in the request section. So I'm getting in my data wallet and I can see that I actually don't have the needed data for accepting any of the available offers. So what shall I do? Maybe uh, I can take a look at the offer from Prosivis. Uh, and if I just scroll down a bit, uh, I can see that I'm missing some keys from the Facebook plugin. I'm actually missing the facebook.api.me likes. So what I will do is that I will actually navigate to the data plugin section and download the needed Facebook data. So here we go. Uh, I hit connect. And I'm actually being redirected to the authentication screen on the Avatri app on Facebook. Uh, and once I authenticate uh, and therefore connect the data source to my wallet and just go via my super complex pin of 1234, uh, I actually need to hit refresh and this way I will store the data in my data wallet. So now it's fetching the data. And once the data is downloaded or fetched, I just hit import to store it in my data wallet. And it seems that everything went well. So once I hit continue, I can actually review all of the imported data from Facebook under the link account section. So these are all the data that got parsed from Facebook. And if I navigate back to the data exchange requests, uh, it actually seems that now I can accept the offer from Prosevis. Under the Explore section, I can see all of the available offers that are currently on the marketplace, and on the Ready to Sign sections, I can see just the offers I have data for. So uh, once it asks me, would you like to sign this contract, I just hit yes, and after I hit it, I can review the offer, to whom the data is sent, and what kind of data. Now I'm hitting signed. And once it's actually completed, uh, I can see now if I hit C tokens that I've received my reward. And we can see that the data consumer or Carlos is also happy because he can now check that he received my data on his server in exchange for the VLD tokens. Also, I'd like to mention that in the near future, this will be definitely organized differently, based on a campaign, not as a data set for each individual user. And now I'm actually thinking of sending the tokens to someone else. For example, to Denny, we mentioned earlier, usually in exchange for some service or, or goods. So let's do it. Uh, what I'm just doing right now is picking up the phone and scanning the QR code on the second device or second, second wallet. Uh, and I'm also filling out a number of 100 VLDs, you can now see the address. Uh, also I would like to mention that currently we are devising options for the user uh, concerning the tokens outside of just transferring them. Uh, we will communicate this at a later date. Uh, and here I'm just confirming the transaction. Uh, and once I hit send, uh, then on Danny's device, on the second device, we can see that Danny is happy because he just received my 100 VLD tokens. So that's about it for the POC. Uh, we're actually working on many other features. Uh, the next important steps on the roadmap are UX slash UI redressing. We have to make many things much simpler. For example, this mnemonic onboarding step that you see here on the screen. Also, new features that are our top priority are being developed these days. So for example, identity verification, survey feature, also design and functionality of the data consumer interface. Uh, and what are the next steps for this POC? Uh, basically, while we continue our work on battery, bringing in new features, we will also continue to use this POC, possibly in some improved version as we move forward. 
uh, as a sales tool. As a sales tool when talking to potential partners before launching the, launching the actual MVP. Uh, okay, so I hope you liked this POC. Uh, basically get back to us with any questions you might have and talk to you soon. Ciao!